the front cover was done by Bartek uh, Nelsinski, and uh, he was a, he's a good friend of Sven. And um, as far as the the front cover goes, I think that that's his interpretation of the title of the album. Um, we we were working with a couple of different ones, and you know it, it's hard to say what it exactly represents. But I think for him that was that was what he felt like the title represented. That's probably not something that's intentional. Um, I guess for the other times that we've done albums, uh, it, it kind of just happened. You know, it's like, well, you know, what should be the title track or not? I, I don't really know why we didn't do this that for this time. I guess we already had titles for all, all the songs. So, uh, like I said, non intentional. Uh, well, basically, um, I guess it's. Uh, partly my fault that, that it's pretty layered. I, I guess we felt, like on this record, like we needed to, um, you know, make a more massive sounding record. And, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of stuff going on on the demos, but we tried to separate them on the record so that we, um, you know, that every everyone in the band has can still feel like they're represented on, in, in the sound. And uh, I, I just think that it sounds better for Soul Rock to sound this way, because we've done it in the past for, with albums like... Um, Natural and Chaos, and it worked for that one, and uh, therefore I think that's what, that was one of the reproaches why we did it this way for this album. Well, um, I guess just kind of like refueling together with the guys, and um, I think me personally was being able to uh, be away from the band for an extended period of time and do a lot of other things. That really inspired me when I came back to to feel like I had more uh, knowledge of uh, as, you know of an approach for songwriting and um, and also production you know so I, maybe um, for me just doing a lot of other stuff you know that really inspired me to do uh, do this album and you know kind of take the approach that we did. The first video for the new album will be Deliverance is Mine. And the video is set to air uh, sometime before we start the U.S. tour in uh, mid-July. <laughs> uh, numerous times. Um, well, I mean, there's always stuff that happens on the road, and uh, you know, I guess that you know, there are, there there has been a couple of incidents where it's been pretty bad, and um, you know. But, you know, as to say, you know, what, what happens on the road stays on the road. That's not really fair saying that, because I, I enjoy uh, touring all over the world. Um, if I had to choose, you know, I, I would say um, the first time we went to Japan was probably the, the most awesome experience we've ever had. We truly enjoy uh, Australia. And uh, that, that's not to take away from the fact that we, we love touring Europe and the U.S., but we do that the most frequent, so it feels a little bit more luxurious when you can actually go to Japan and Australia, I think. <laughs> oh, man, that's, uh, that's a fun one. Um, well, uh, where should we start? Um, Let's start with Flink. Flink is the guy that, you know, he's, he's definitely the comedian in the band. And uh, when he, um, you know, he's, he's kind of a joy spreader, you know. He always makes everyone laugh and the, the most random shit comes out all the time. And, uh, he you know, he's just a beast who loves to eat tons of food and pump weights. Um, I guess uh, Sven is the guy who's a little bit more recluse, but he um, he's... He's the kind of guy who is a super sweet dude and uh, who loves to play uh, online poker. So it's 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 very possible that you know if you're a poker player out there that you might have played with him in the same room. Um, let me see, Bjorn. He's just the, the eccentric singer who loves to sing even when he's not on stage. He uh, usually brings the the show with him into the tour bus and. You know, uh, late at night, he usually sings along to his classic rock music and, uh, you know, just a big, uh, big nice teddy bear that looks really mean. Um, uh, Dirk is uh, also uh, a fun guy who um, we, um, 
we definitely, when we, I remember when we met him the first time, you know, we couldn't believe that that was the same guy that, you know, when you see Dirk, he looks like this, you know, this metalhead that's like really skinny, and then when he sits down, it just, it sounds like it's a monster behind the drums. Um, he's just uh, a genuinely sweet dude who, uh, who loves to play drums and hang out with the band. Suva is um, is a great guy. He uh, he's, an, he's a shredder, monster guitar player, and uh, he's also really funny. And um, you know, just got a just a just a great guy who you know you love to hang out with, and you know he loves to you know be on stage and play in front of people and hang out with the fans. Uh, well, most of us, uh, we do what we do full-time. Um, the one person that actually does uh, do uh, a full-time job on the side would be Flink, and he, uh, he's kind of like one of those guys you see on, um, on Lockdown on TV, you know, where uh, he kind of uh, muscles all these, like, drunken people into jail and, like, escorts them from there to the courthouse and stuff like that, and he loves doing it, you know, it's, 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 that's his thing, and most of us, we, um, you know, on the apart from Solbrook, I do a lot of music production and uh, songwriting. Uh, Dirk does a lot of session gigs and uh, works a lot together with uh, Tune Track for um, for uh, uh, putting together uh, MIDI packs and stuff like that. Uh, Bjorn is just super busy with uh, you know all of his tons of his projects where he's singing in and writing music on the side. We're also collaborating, me and him. Um, Sylvain so teaches uh, guitar at a university in, in France, and um, Sven, I guess, you know, he makes most of his living playing online poker, if it's not uh, being out with soul work, and uh, that's it. Uh, well, my main instrument is obviously guitar, but I consider myself being a pretty decent bass player. Um, I cannot play drums to save my life. Uh, same goes for piano, but piano is probably an instrument that I would really like to master and, uh, you know, maybe sometime when I get enough time I'm going to sit down and try to get into it, for sure. If I wasn't in a band, uh, I would hopefully be uh, doing production and recording full time and also doing songwriting, which is something that, I, that I'm very passionate about. As far as not doing music, um, that's hard to say, man. Uh, I really, I really enjoy the culinary stuff, you know. So that I, wouldn't be impossible that I would do something like that. The one thing I have to have when I'm on tour is I have to have pictures of my son and my wife. Those are very important for me, and I also need my laptop. Um, well, I, I'm kind of new to the area where I live right now, but I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to get into it, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I, I'm so, I'm so new to where the area where I live right now in North Carolina, so I'm, I'm just getting started, but, you know, I'm definitely going to check out what's there, for sure. Uh, I have lived here since 2004, so I guess we're going on, uh, going on six years now and uh, the reason I live here and moved over here is because I uh, found the love of my life and got married and decided to live over here. Ooh, um, well I can't really say for the new one because we haven't played any, anything from the new one yet. Uh, I still do enjoy playing uh, Stabbing the Drama, that's, that's a fun song to play. Um, I do enjoy playing Ambassador Chain. Um, I know a lot of people like As We Speak, but it's really not that much fun to play anymore since we played it 450,000 times. But, you know, definitely if the crowd is into it, that makes this song, you know, that makes any song fun to play, you know? So it's, it's, it's really, you can say that you enjoy to play some songs live, you know, for yourself, but really it ha a lot of it has to do with the crowd's reaction to what they like.
Yeah, actually, I would say most of the people that I know that play metal don't really listen to a whole lot of metal. Um, that, the same goes for me, you know. I, I, uh, the list is endless, you know. There's just I, I listen to a lot of obscure instrumental music, you know, stuff like uh, Guthrie Govan, uh, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Um, uh, Jerry Douglas, Tony Rice, uh, a lot of bluegrass stuff. Um, I also uh, big fan of Carnival. I think that band is fantastic. I, Bjorn showed me them, and I, I, I've been completely sold on, on their music. Um, one of the better metal bands, I would probably say, is Opeth. You know, I really appreciate what they're doing. They're they're really doing something that I feel is really inventive, and you know, they they really seem to. I appreciate people who put an effort into making their music, and uh, as opposed to people that sometimes feel like they maybe throw songs together just to make a record and uh, you know it's a lot of work but you know I really appreciate good performance good songs and it doesn't matter really what music style it is